Okay, so today we are going to talk about a diagram that most students have a lot of problems with and this is the diagram concerning the third degree price discrimination. Okay, so before we start looking at the third degree price discrimination diagram, this is a short recap about what third degree price discrimination is. Third degree price discrimination basically refers to charging different prices to different groups of consumers for the same good for reasons not associated with cost. So some common examples of third degree price discrimination could be things like um, cinema tickets, whereby for the same cinema ticket to the same movie screening, uh, student prices and adult prices can be vastly different. And this is not because there's a difference in cost to Golden Village in screening the movie to students versus adults. Actually, for Golden Village, they incur the same cost but yet they still charge different prices to students as compared to adults. Adults usually pay a much higher price, price as compared to students. Okay, so let's look at how we illustrate third degree price discrimination using a diagram. So for third degree price discrimination, there are usually two or more groups of consumers in two or more markets. In one market, let's say market A versus market B. In market A, you notice that the demand in this market is relatively more price inelastic as compared to the, to the demand in market B. You can see the difference in the PED in terms of the slopes of the demand curve. In market A, the slope of the demand curve is far steeper as compared to the demand curve in market B. Now if we look at the combined market, markets A and B, what we need to do is just do a horizontal summation of the demand curves in market A and the demand curves in market B. So that means we add up horizontally the values. Okay? So up until the dotted line, the demand curve in market A and B, above the dotted line is actually the demand curve from just market A. But below the dotted line, this combined demand curve is a summation of the demand curve from market A as well as the demand curve from market B. Okay, so let's look at what happens when this firm decides to charge a single price, meaning that this firm is not doing third degree price discrimination. So in order to figure out where is its profit maximizing quantity, we need to draw in the MC curve. And let's say that the MC curve looks like this. This means that the profit maximization point is actually here. And the profit maximizing quantity is given by Q and the profit maximizing price is given by P. Now if this firm decides to charge the same price to all consumers, regardless of whether they are in market A or market B, you'll notice that this price is actually too high for people in market B which means that this firm will only have customers from market A. Now, if the firm does not like this, does not like the fact that, oh, it's not um, getting customers from market B, what the firm can do is to conduct price discrimination. So how can a firm do this? The firm can assume that there is the same cost condition in both market A and market B, meaning there is no difference in cost of serving customers in market A versus customers in market B. So assuming the same marginal cost of serving customers in market A versus market B, the profit maximizing price and quantity will be as such in market A. Okay, We look at where the marginal cost, which is the purple line, intersects with the marginal revenue. That is the profit maximizing point. And the profit maximizing quantity is Q1 with the profit maximizing price of P. And in market B, we do the same thing and we notice that in this case, there is a profit maximizing quantity of Q2 with a profit maximizing price of P. Now what this means is that when the firm conducts third degree price discrimination, he actually charges a higher price in market A and a lower price in market B as compared to what he would have charged if he only charged a single price. So in a nutshell, the price discriminating firm is actually charging a higher price in the market with, a, with the more price inelastic demand. And a lower price in the market with the more price 
elastic demand. And this actually makes sense based on what you have learned under demand supply elasticity that for customers with more price inelastic demand, even if the firm charges a higher price, quantity demanded will actually fall less than proportionately. Whereas for customers with a more price elastic demand, if you lower prices, quantity demanded will actually increase more than proportionately. So when do we use this third degree price discrimination diagram? Very simply, when you're trying to show that third degree price discrimination benefits the firm by allowing the firm to capture a market that would otherwise have been lost if a single price was charged. Okay, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.